Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hey there, Star Wars Destiny folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and the Commando cast. Thanks very much for tuning in, and happy Destiny Friday. So I am personally super excited about tonight's cast. It's actually been on my docket for about six, seven weeks now, believe it or not. But hey, we keep having stuff to talk about, which you know what is not too bad, not too bad for a supposedly dead game. So uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you to our ARH folks. But anyway, so tonight's cast involves a story. And then I'm going to be asking you the question and answering it for myself of what type of Destiny player are you? Hey there, Star Wars listening folks. Welcome back, and thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Like I said, this is today we're going to talk about something that's been on my list of stuff to talk about for, for a long time, so it'll be really fun, I think, to uh, get into it, and it'll be a little something different. If some of you may not may not like it, and that's that's completely fair, but like I said, I, you know, it's something I wanted to talk about, and I, I think it's an interesting um, philosophical-type discussion, right? A, a good question to ask yourself about really... You know the the thesis statement, the thesis question. What type of what type of Star Wars listening player are you? Now, the poster child for tonight's discussion, which is why you see here, which is kind of a, kind of odd, is a sound the alarm, right? Reroll any number of an opponent's dice showing damage. Now, I think it's an interesting I think it's an interesting one to show because some players really liked this card, some players really hated this card, they really thought it was bad. And uh, I think it's a really interesting point for tonight's discussion. So using that to put it in, in context, uh, I wanted to go ahead and start by telling my, my story that, that inspired this. So just, just stick with me, right? I got, I got to paint the picture. I got to paint the picture. So as you guys know, many, many of you guys know I'm, I'm a runner. Um, you know, during the winter times of the year, um, many of much of that forces me to run in the dark and one such cold january morning i had to wake up at you know i woke up at 5 30 in the morning as i do to go put some miles in and uh, it was cold and it was freaking pouring and uh, it was dark because it's 5 30 in the morning right so i go out and i live kind of on the edge of developed and not right so as you guys know when when new places are developed they are brought up to code so this was one of those dark streets that had like a couple random street lights on it, right? Because the new house had been built, they had to put a street light on, but the rest of the homes, they weren't there anyway, because it's undeveloped, right? Like farmland and stuff like that, right? It's not that atypical for where I am. I'm sure you guys have seen places like that. It's like two random, like new development, two random street lights, and then nothing but cows, right? It's just the way it works. So anyway... It's dark, it's rainy, I'm running down this road, I've got my headlamp on so I can see, but then I hit this point where I hit the street light, okay? And this street light, as you guys, I mean, you guys know, it's black asphalt, reflecting light, it's bright, and my headlamp no longer works, right? Because obviously the light from the street light is way brighter than my headlamp is, so I can see now where the headlamp, I can see now where the street light is, but I can't see anything else around it. Right now it's winter time. It's windy. There's stuff everywhere on the road. Right. So I had to make a decision. It was, do I go through the area that I can see the bright light that has a twig on it? Right. And it wasn't a twig. It was like some sticks. Right. So do I take the risk of going and trying to jump over these sticks in the wet and risk slipping or risk stepping on it and tripping or, or whatever it may be? Or do I go through the black, the unknown, right? So do I take the risk of what I know 
or do I chance it and I go through the unknown? Now, in the end, what I ended up doing was I actually skirted the light and the dark, right? I, I hedged my bets, I suppose. Uh, but this was very early in my run. And then what I thought about for the next, because that's, that's who I am, right? It's, it's just what I do. What I thought about for the next, you know, 30 minutes of my run was, well, that was an interesting risk decision. And then, of course, my head went naturally to Star Wars Destiny because I'm a nerd. <laughs> let's, like, let's be honest. Let's, what we do, we're still here. We're all still here. So out of that came Sound the Alarm, right? Came this cast. And I thought it was a very interesting discussion because it really asks the question, what type of player are you, right? Because, it, let, let, I mean, let's think about it. One of the fun, not one of, probably the most fundamental thing in Star Wars Destiny is re-rolling your dice, right? Choosing when and, I mean, is it the most fundamental? Probably not, Andrew, fair enough. But, but it's a very key component of this game is when, when is it worth re-rolling your dice? When is it not? Do you chuck one card to re-roll one die? Maybe if it's your out. But generally, you're going to only invest the risk if there's a fair amount of that payoff. And, and that's why, coming back to our buddy Sound the Alarm here, I thought that this was a really good example of... I thought it was a really good analogy, I suppose, to the picture that I painted, right? Of... What type of Star Wars Destiny player are you? Are you the person who's just going to continue to drop the card and re-roll? And so in my analogy, would you have just said, okay, this is what I know. I'm going to take the known risk. Or will I go into the black and risk it all for the chance of maybe having it be better? Right? Will I just completely drop my last card, right? Maybe maybe it's a field medic, right? That, I mean, how many times is that? I know it's come up a ton with me because I like to play red-yellow, right? How many times does it come up? You're like, I have a field medic in hand. I know that this is worth one for two, but I could get the mystery box, right? So like, is it worth, is it worth dropping that card, right? I mean, we've all been in situations equivalent to that. I have an electroshock. Do I drop and like that electroshock can save me from taking damage in the future, but I have no money right now. I'd have to hold it into next time. I could pitch this to maybe create three damage and then it would be great, but I could get two blanks and a disrupt. Like we've all been there, right? So, and, and I said, not like, like I said, that's why I think sound the alarm is, is a great example, right? So sound the alarm, reroll any number of an opponent's dice showing damage. Some people really love this card because in its day, in its day, let's be very clear here, right? So this came out, uh, this was the two-player set card, right? So this came out in the gap between EAW and Legacies, right? So you need to put it in context. I mean, this was, uh, no, Doubt actually was in that set too. So that Doubt was in EA, uh, EAW, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. Anyway, the point is, for from a, he, like, heroes use the snot of this card because they didn't have Doubt, right? So... Well, some heroes use the Sonata. I mean, that's the point, right? Do you like Sound the Alarm? Do you not like Sound the Alarm? The point was, reroll because you could reroll into reroll any number of opponent's dice. Well, okay, they're showing a couple damage for zero, which was really good back then. You could make them no longer have damage. You, on the other hand, could spin this card and roll them into more damage than they already had. Right, and then it would be their action, and they'd get to hit you, and you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. So it's one of these like high risk, high reward kind of type cards. And you know, maybe you're sitting on your side of the screen, you're like, well, maybe this isn't the best example of what you're trying to say, and 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 that's fair. It is fair, but but I I think it illustrates the type of picture of you know what type of risk are you willing to assume? And great, okay. That's what we're talking about. We've talked about who I am as a person. No. So where am I actually going with this, right? So ho hopefully what you are what you have thought about about this point is like, you know, just sound the alarm. It, and again, I want to be very clear here. Putting it in today's context, sound the alarm is not a good card, right? Looking at all the other stuff we have. But again, back in the day, would you have played sound the alarm in your deck? Would you not have? Extrapolate that to today. 
and try to put it in context of what type of player do you think you are? You Are you a more risky person? Are you willing to chuck a card that is, let's say, pseudo critical to your, I'm not talking about a black market connection here, right? I'm not talking about your first black market. I'm talking about a card that maybe, maybe it's a critical to your plan late game. Are you willing to chuck it early to try and sink in three more damage? Or are you willing to sit on that card all game in the hopes that the opportunity may arise to get more value out of it? That's, that's really the question. And then where I want to go with this is how does that change how you, right, identifying the type of player you are, how does that change the type of decks that you may naturally be drawn to or maybe should be playing, right? So what is your more, what do I see? Excuse me. So basically what I'm trying to say here is if you are, let's say you're the you're you're the pro sound the alarmer, right? You're the let's go ahead and go into the unknown, right? What type of deck would you prefer? Whereas if you're a let's stick with the light and accept the risk that we do know, even though it may be worse than the unknown, right? What type of decks might you be more attracted to? And and with with the thought that I've put into this, and you guys know I'm a cons- I, I'm a consistency type player. That's what I'm drawn to is stuff that can give me consistency with relative chance for upside because that's what Destiny is, right? Destiny is about rolling threes, so what gives you the best chance to output max damage? I mean, that's what Destiny is, right? I mean, maybe not damage if you're a male player, I get it, but it's about outputting the max based on taking calculated risks, right? I mean, that's what Destiny boils down to. So what are you draw or what are you drawn to and what should you be drawn to, right? So the person who is the anti-sound the alarm type person is more of the conservative type player, right? You do not want to risk upside because you're more worried about downside, and which, which is completely fair, right? So this type of person is going to be more of your support type long game player, maybe maybe a mill type player, or maybe a control type player. And your let's go for it, let's chance it are going to skew generally towards being an aggro type player. And it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be like aggro in the pure like red deck win sense, but it's going to be someone who's very interested in getting in front, popping down the first character, and owning the game control from the very beginning and finishing that way, right? So putting it in perspective to, let's say, the latest meta, right? A, a Bow Rex or something like that is more than likely going to be something that I... A player who is pro taking more risk and going for the upside of things is going to be like like a Bo Rex player. Whereas if you were to look at someone who, or, you know, I mean, there are many new decks. There's new decks every week, depending on how things get. I, I get it, right? But your, your decks who are looking to just output threes, output twos consistently, just put a ton of damage on the board, and you're going to be willing to re-roll, right? So you get a re I mean, think about it. There are many times where, I mean, money is so valued in this game for getting more dice on the table. I mean, we all know that at this point. But there are times where you just go ahead and you're like, I'm going to re-roll the resource because Bo has a 2, a 3, and a special, right? You do do it. Some of us do, right? Others just just take. And it, actually, to, to be fair, the game has evolved to a point at this point where most of us just take the money. Um, but it didn't always used to be that way. Right, so it's it is it's 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 I I believe it's very much in that sense. Whereas the I would never give my opponent the a chance to re-roll their dice and then take an action. You're definitely going to skew more towards a conservative, control esque type stuff. You're probably playing three wides to give yourself more health, to more time to build up your game plan, and you know decks decks in that type of fashion and I, I shouldn't say necessarily three wide because sure trandos is right i mean but, but you you guys get it so anyway i hopefully you guys are understanding the 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 beer chat that we're that we're having today and and just kind of putting yourself in that mindset of 
you know, what is my personal play style? What is my personal decision style? Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the better way. What is my personal decision style? What type of decisions do I typically make? And am I playing decks that fit my, am I playing strategies that, am I playing decks that adhere to strategies that fit my personal preference? Because you are naturally going to make in the heat moment decisions and setting your, like, not everybody, anybody can learn how to play any deck fundamentally. But when you have to make a decision that you haven't practiced five times, 18 times, whatever it may be, you're going to go with what your gut tells you at the time. So, you know, in many cases, putting yourself into the lane that you can make successful decisions based on what you naturally want to do, I think is is more successful. So that's why I that's why I thought it was interesting to talk about this tonight is, you know, again, this isn't for everybody. A lot of people just want to be told what to go play, what's best, they can net deck. Fair enough. But you know, you look at people out there like, I don't know, like like a beacon or a rando mando or whatever, like those guys are drawn to specific decks. Like those are the decks that they like to go play. And that's because A, yes, their play style helps them develop those decks, but it's also because they're good at those decks because they inherently want to play them a certain way because it fits their natural heartbeat, right? It fits who they are. And other people are gonna like myself, in many cases, I go look for a two wide deck that can output the most damage over the first three turns. I mean, that's that's generally how I go, right? And and there's nothing, those are both right because playing your personal place, I mean, sure, and within any meta, one may have an advantage over the other, blah, 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 blah. I get it. But playing something that fits your natural play style, fits your natural personality, I should say, is going to help you develop that faster and it's going to help that de- help you develop the deck in the way that will find you the most success. I mean, we only have 30 cards in this deck. Generally about 22 to 24 to 26 of those are almost auto includes and then you get a little bit of customization, right? But that customization can really, really matter. I mean, if you look at a Andrew Bow Rex versus a Liquid Snake Bow Rex, like Liquid Snake is high risk, high reward going on the, I mean, I'm talking, you know, before all the nerfs and stuff, right? But Snake was on a high risk, high reward type thing where he's like, I'm going to go fishing with Black Mark and I'm going to just get the value out of it. And it was very, very successful for him. But when I tried to play that version, it didn't work for me, right? I wanted the more consistent straight damage output, right? So that's what I'm saying is we have a lot of, Limited, well, limited. We have limited flexibility, but we have flexibility in how we do this, not just within character choices, but even with the cards within the deck. And building it towards your personal play style, your personal risk aversion or non aversion to it, I suppose, and really sitting down and evaluating that how does this, does this fit me versus is this something I want to play versus is this something that I've seen that's good, I think has a lot of personal value at at many levels. Now, now again, I want to be clear. Anybody can practice and take reps and take notes, but I think that you're going to find more success faster if you zero in on what you like to play um, and also making sure that what you like to play fits how you like to play, right? Because I, I do think that they're two very different things, right? People may be, a con- may be attracted to the concept of a mill deck, but if you're... And, Again, just beer chat, I'm going to go off on a tangent, right? I think that's almost why in the way of the force meta, I was very attracted to the mill decks of that era because it was almost an aggro mill, right? And I'm not saying like I'm necessarily an aggro player, but it was almost like a straight damage mathematical mill, right? Cassian, Cassian Yoda with everything you did, it advanced. Yeah, I think that's fair, right? I mean, it was almost just like go out and do it and get in front of them and force them to react. So, whereas, you know, many other mill decks are a control type mill, respond, take away options, choke slowly, survive, in the way the force and a little bit ATG meta, well, I guess it was um, con meta, right, once once Leia hit, um, you almost had like an aggro mill. And it was very, yeah, actually, I hadn't really thought about that. I mean, this is the point of these chats, that's really interesting. Anyway. Side note aside, let's let's go ahead and wrap this up and get it out. 
Um, you know, I, I think, like I said, really taking a minute to kind of consider and, and sure, maybe sound the alarm's not the ideal. I, I think it's a pretty good one, but you know, maybe it's not the ideal one for you of helping you make that decision. But really thinking about, you know, if you're approaching the streetlight and you have to make a decision on the dot, which way to go, what do you choose? Do you go with what you know or do you go with what you don't because it might be better? I think it's a really good analogy for a lot of the type of decisions that we face frequently in Star Wars Destiny. And knowing what you would choose and knowing what you would be comfortable with, I think can help you make a lot of decisions for what type of deck suits you best and how it fits your personal play style and your personal preferences. So anyway, I, I, I hope this was kind of fun. I hope this was kind of interesting. At the very least, like I said, it's something that I've wanted to get out for a while and wanted to chat about with you guys for a while. And I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about it, whether you received this well or not, um, whether it made you think or whether, yeah, whether you thought it was dumb, because I know you'll tell me that too. So anyway, folks, thank you very, very much for tuning in tonight. I really appreciate the ability to just sit and do this with you guys on, on the YouTubes and uh, hang out with you guys and have the chat. So nothing else, folks. Cheers and go Commando.